Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome along to this. It's Tuesday, and we are on Actors Talks. So, hope you've had a great day. Hey, and uh, I'd almost forgotten, um, it is Pancake Day today. So, a happy Pancake Day to you if you've had your pancakes. I've not had mine yet, but I do have my coffee. Paul Adams, you have a lot to answer for. Uh, so tonight on Actors Talks, we have got um, uh, just a, a great, great guest on. Uh, I, I'm literally so excited. I'm bursting. So it's uh, all, all good. Um, listen, when you're on as well tonight, make sure that you're asking questions because uh, it's going to be a good one, particularly for those actors out there. We have got uh, an acting coach on, a mentor extraordinaire. Uh, and the guy who's coming on is uh, my... Uh, acting coach and I uh, and, and guide and mentor uh, and I have to apologize in advance I am a bit of a fanboy so um, I, I might get a bit schmaltzy here so you'll have to cut through that but I've got to tell you that uh, just brilliant uh, love the guy a bit and really really good so if you're an actor if you're disillusioned or you're looking for some way uh, regardless of whatever level you're, you're at there'll be something that you'll get out to uh, tonight's uh, actors uh, talks that will be great um, so it's lovely to see you hey you've got JJ on there as well Dan Whale is on there good to see you you. Amanda's on as well. Um, Sway, good to see you there. Um, it, it's uh, it's brilliant to see so many people, and these are getting a lot of watches. What I'm uh, hearing from people is that they're listening to them um, uh, after time uh, and everything, and picking up the uh, uh, the juice from them, which is uh, which is brilliant. Um, so, without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome the legend that is Mr. Inigo Caliano. He'll be coming on any second now. Uh, go it him. Good. Uh, <laughs> that's JJ has it here. Check it before signing the contract. <laughs> well, I hope it's worth your money. Hey! Good evening, Mark. <laughs> How are you, sir? I'm good. Happy Thanksgiving. Day. Yeah, and to you too. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you uh, there, Mr. Inigo Galliano. Have I pronounced that correctly? Yes, that, that's really good. Yeah, that was perfect. <laughs> well, uh, so so do, you, do you want to say my name? The, the surname is not easy, is it? No, go on then. Mark, uh, how do you pronounce your surname? <laughs> I love putting you on the spot. It's a, it's a, it's a funny thing, isn't it, about names? And it's we, isn't it? It's well, we, it, we, we've spoken about this in, in our sessions and everything. And you um, said something to me that really resonated about, you know, the depth of, of a name. The, the, in fact, it's not just a, a, it's a name, it's the entire depth. I loved it. Yeah, and now I forgot about yours. Sorry, I don't know. It's not that I forgot. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> well, some people say Beecham, some people say Beauchamp. But the strange, the, the strange thing is that um, it's called, it's Beauchamp, it's French. It means beautiful fields, um, oh. which is the same name that the James Bond villain had, the Dr. Evil James Bond, because he was called Blofeld, which is... Swiss or Belgian for the same thing, beautiful fields. So I'm like, I am really that bald Kojak, Dr. No character. You are a beautiful field, Mark. <laughs> so I, I, I can't tell you, I'm being very garrulous this evening because I am so excited to, uh, to have you on Actors Talks. And thanks very much for agreeing to come on. Um, it, it's great. So what have you been up to? How's your day? Today, today it's been a quiet day actually. Today I was I was preparing for this tonight. <laughs> no, I, I did a bit of work in the morning, a couple of phone calls, emails, and then do you know what I did? I went to the mountains and I was horse riding because I've been working a lot in the past uh, month and I needed to, I need nature and animals. You know, it's so important, so important, especially nowadays. I think. Yeah, it, it's. Um, I, I think we, we, we'll get on to, to the, the, the checkout work. For, for those people who just put a bit of context on this, um, uh, I like to invest in myself. And um, I found, actually, I can't remember. It was one of those uh, fate that um, Inigo and I um, never met, just found each other. And I just wanted somebody different. And, you know, to be outside of the UK with a different culture uh, and a different spin on things. And uh, I found you in one of the principles that you uh, have really uh, passed home to me is that being in contact with nature you know those things are just amazing um, everything yeah. you find everything all the answers are in nature you see we just don't know how to look at it yeah it, it's um 
It, it is one of those things. So tell us a little bit about your, you. How did you get into this acting life? How did you, uh, you know, find yourself um, becoming a, 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 do you call yourself a coach? A, a, what, what do you call yourself? No, not really. <laughs> it's hard. I don't know call myself anymore. <laughs> I do a lot of things. I, I'm mainly an actor. I started acting when I was maybe 18 years old, started to work professionally in theater in Spain. Always loved acting because um, my grandfather on my father's side, uh, he was an actor and I never met him. Uh, but for me, the only way to see him, to know something about him was watching his movies. So that was quite magical for me or TV adverts or things like that, you see. And I think that's where the whole thing sort of started. And then I moved to the UK when I was 17 um, to learn English. And I work as a nasher at the Old Witch Theatre in London. And I can't tell you, I fell in love with, with um, theatre in the UK, with the theatre culture and everything. And I was very lucky. I was watching plays every night for free. I'm, actually, I was getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's where all the whole thing started in a more serious way, I think. Then I went back to Spain and told my parents, I'm very sorry, but uh, I'm going to pursue the acting. <laughs> uh, were, they, were they for it? Were they against it? What were they? My mom has always been a bit of a dreamer, so she was for it. My dad is an economist. He was not. <laughs> <laughs> because I, I think a, a, lot, a lot of people go... <laughs> I, I think a lot of people go through that struggle, you know, particularly when they're younger, because um, uh, people know what, what a perilous um, industry and, and business this can be. Um, not for any dark reasons, it's just tough. Um, so I think having the, the backing of, uh, of your family is quite important. I, I, yeah, my, my wife, who was a dancer, uh, um, one of the pre- requisites of her going into the industry was that she had to go and do um, uh, an education first uh, to do it. And I think at the time she was a bit like this, but she said it's been the best thing that she ever did, taking that time uh, yeah. to, to it, do that. It's important to also do other things, you know, because what we do is about life. So the more you explore, the more you... My son is head of buildings at the Old Witch. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. The Old Witch Theatre feels like home for me, and it's where I grew up, really. It's where I became a man, <laughs> from a child to a man. Uh, such a special theatre, so haunted as well. I think it's full of energy. It's, it's magical. I love it. I love it. There is a girl, let me tell you a little bit about this. Cause yeah, go for it. Upstairs, there are many, but one is upstairs in the Grand Circle Ladies' Toilet. And every, all the answers were very scared to go and check the toilets. <laughs> but I always would go, you know, before the show or after the show, because they heard like a woman screaming years ago. There is a ghost there, but apparently. So I went there and I started to love going there. And then I found that in the toilet, there was a picture of Vivian Lee when she did um, Streetcar Nine, Named Desire. The production happened in that theater. So every, every true goes there, you see. I'm not lying. <laughs> so every evening I would go to the toilet to talk to Vivian Lee because I assumed that the ghost was Vivian Lee. And, and I was auditioning for Lambda and I would go and perform my monologue in front of the Vivian Lee portrait. And I swear to you, I was probably imagining this, but I would get feedback from her like, no, do this, do that. <laughs> it was probably myself. I, I was beginning to be a bit crazy already but uh yeah it was such a special um experience so i love the oh man i love that that is uh i mean so she was um she was passing on um reactions and, and stuff yeah uh, that's how i experienced it <laughs> maybe i need medication or something but just no i think that now being serious just by doing that monologue in such a building with such a theatrical history in front of the picture of such an actress i don't know that has to inspire you some way or another you know and i think i would go every day to to practice <laughs> so 
Well, when we were, um, when I was first uh, seeking uh, an acting coach and, and, uh, and what's become a, a, a mentor, one of the things was um, about creating atmospheres and I asked you the question. And what I love about working with you is you never really, you let me find it. You know, it, it's one of those where we, we go on the journey together, but it's never, oh, just do this or do that. Or it, it's not like feedback I get. It's just a real a journey with you you know and and i think some of the things that you've said already show that that sort of side of you that how connected you, you are so yeah what would be the point if i bring a formula or a system and try to make you fit into it you know when graham dixon asked me to continue with the with the training at the studio in london i said to him okay graham i am not a teacher I am not an academic, I'm an actor. And the same way that I uh, relate with a character or with a story or with a scene, I'm gonna do it with the people I work with. So it's a creative process, what we do. And um, what happens in our sessions is unique because it's happening in the moment. I'm receiving from you, you're receiving from me and something is born there, but it's communication, we're creating something. I, I, I couldn't, that's why I'm, I couldn't, consider myself a teacher or a coach, I, with all the respect, for me, that would be boring. I need to be creating in the moment. And we do get these drop-ins and these moments of, wow, because, and then you, sometimes you go, oh my God, you, you know, I, I can't believe what you just said. I'm, not, I'm thinking, me too. I don't know where that came from, you know, but it's from our meeting, this connection, what's happening here now and being present. And acting is about that. Any creative process is about relationships. We think it's about ourselves and trying to bring something out of myself. And then we hyperventilate or force things or get very physical so we can feel something. But it's about meeting something. It's an encounter with something that is outside of you and there, something is born out of that meeting. And that's what happens in the sessions, really. And that's why I enjoy it so much because it's like, acting <laughs> so, I, 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 do you know it, it is it's almost um you know the environments that are created there it, it's just like uh, it is just like uh, acting and uh, i've got to say there's two things uh, um one remind me to uh, if you can explain who graham dixon is but the second thing is for oh. those people uh, watching is uh inigo um is one of the few people who's uh, made me cry um, so in our session last week, we were doing uh, some sonnets and my, I, I was just moved by the work uh, on there. Not, and this is not an acting uh, device to go, oh, I can cry on thing. I was just so moved by what we did. And, uh, and obviously, yes, it is the relationship. But I think a lot of it was what you set up. Really, what was it? I, I hate to do this because I love to have all the credits, but what happened really? <laughs> You're so <laughs> humble. <laughs> you were able to see Shakespeare for what it is. You were you connected with Shakespeare, with the genius of Shakespeare, taking all of the mental things we've got, all the ideas, all the impositions, all the needs to do something with this to get to an outcome. So all I did was help you to prepare to be open to receive. And then you just read the sonnet and magic happened because you don't have to do much with it. You just got to receive it. But to receive it is not so easy because we're trying to do something. What I tell you always, don't dress the, 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 the poodle, right? The poodle, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we, be we, we, we better put some context on that about what you mean about that. Well, when you read, we don't know how to read anymore. And when we get a monologue or a text, we interpret it. And we don't understand that the text is like a musical score. It's all been written. Uh, Shakespeare has done its work, his work, his job. It's all done, you see. You just got to be able to receive it and, and, and give it to the audience. But first you got to receive it. But because we don't know how to receive, we don't know what to dive into the text. We don't know how to get the inner movement or structure or essence of the text. We don't know how to do that because we're in the mind. What we do is we... Through, we throw a lot of mental interpretations to the text and then we interpret the text and then nothing happens because we're like putting screens between us and the text. It's about taking off 
and really let it come to you. But that's very scary because in order to do that, you've got to sacrifice your need to feel safe and to have an outcome. But we don't understand that, um, we don't understand that that's real safety, <laughs> you know? We want, our mind wants to have control and does all sorts of stupid things, but we don't understand what real control is. And many times it's about trusting and surrendering, especially when you are working with Shakespeare. Trust, he did a good job, <laughs> believe me. You know, just let him do it for you. Be, be a channel, be a, be a vessel it, uh, Mark, who's one of the um, uh, guests on last week, he's just said, I love that, the, the Texas Act Musical Score, he said, it's, it's so true. Um, when we've been working together, one um, of my things is, uh, is imposing and, and wanting to force, uh, and I think one of the big things that I've taken from our work together is um, to do exactly that. To, uh, you know, I'm not, still not perfect at it, I'm working at it all the time. Well, actually, I'm not uh, working. I'm just letting it happen. But it's difficult for all of us. That's why acting is not an easy thing to do. It's easy and it's not because it's the way we've been educated. It's the way we live. You know, it's our society. It's, it's all very much about finding safety in all the wrong places. But uh, the, the mind gets very easily satisfied and suddenly feels safe with a concept. But the great thing about acting is when you're on stage, that's not going to help you. So it forces you to go into what's real. And that's the mystery and the greatness of acting because acting is about life, because acting is about creating realities in front of a camera or on stage. And as we live, we create realities all the time. So we're tapping into something quite big when we act, into the essence of life, really. That's why it's so scary sometimes you know because you face uh, yeah we, we've spoken about the i alluded to it earlier about names um and you were speaking about the you know the depth of names and we, we were feeling the texture of a name in the earth where it had been or if it was a spanish name um you know from where you're from uh, and you were saying about the the texture and the feel and that just really resonated with me you know yeah uh, well, names or accents or languages, they all, you know, the languages, they, 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 because that's where the name comes from, from a language. And that what a language represents is the awareness of a culture. And that awareness, what represents is how that group of people from that geographic, part, geographic um, part of the world, how they see the world, how they understand and perceive the world. So it's connected with the weather, the landscape, their history. Um, and that's really interesting when you have to learn a language or do an accent to do it from that point of view. You see, uh, working with people, I found out that, um, for example, the Russian and the Portuguese accents are very similar because the, the, the phonetic is similar. Mm. But, uh, for example, to make the difference, Russians, they hit the consonants while Portuguese are more in the vowels. And, you know, vowels, they have the emotional load of the word, while consonants are more objective and more about the description of the world. Like, if I say to you, ah, has emotional meaning, or oh, ooh, eh, you know, there, ee, there is meaning there. But if I say to you, oh, there yeah. is emotional meaning, but it's the rain, or the wind. So it's interesting to see how, for example, English people, they are more in the consonants. Mediterranean people are more in the vowels. Spanish is all about vowels. Um, and it was very interesting to find that for the actress, in order not to sound Portuguese, but to be more Russian, it was the same gesture in the music, but hitting the consonants, you see? It's really See, this is just some uh, high level stuff when you get into it. And I can't tell you how much it's helped me with interpretation of characters and just, you know, looking at, at words in different ways. And rather than pausing and saying, oh, I'll do this or have little tricks or, or, or whatever. Now I, I really take the time to let it hit me and, uh, and absorb. And that's been the wonder of working with you just to change my perspective. 
um, on that, you know, it was great. Uh, anyway, tell us a little bit about Graeme, um, because I suppose that he was your mentor in a way, I think, in, in some respects. Well, Graham Dixon, he is the founder of the Michael Chekhov Studio London, and he's been the, he's been running it for for years. Um, and uh, he's I met him in Madrid doing a workshop. Uh, I went to the workshop as an actor, and the person who was in charge of translating Graham lost her voice, and she was a singer, and she had a concert in two days, so there was big drama going on. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was a guy, one of the organizers of the workshop, who said, I'll translate for Graham. But he didn't speak very good English. He wasn't an actor. So it's like the message was not getting to, to the participants. And I was watching all of that thinking, oh, he's saying such great things, but it's not working. You know, like, I, I should do something about it. I didn't want to. <laughs> but I jumped in and I went to translating. An amazing thing happened because... I've never been a translator, especially live. Like, you know, like I was talking at the same time he was talking. It was very stressful for hours, maybe eight hours each day. And it was three days. Yeah. So what I did, and I think this is when I first experienced Chekhov, the Michael Chekhov approach to acting. I couldn't think, I couldn't really think about the language or the translation or the right word. So what I did since he was speaking about gesture. <laughs> what I did is I was imitating all the gestures he was doing, you know, and it gave me everything that I needed. Like it, it was so fluent. It, it, it was happening. At, at first, everyone in the, in the workshop thought I was making fun of the teacher. <laughs> if he does this, I would do this, you know, but it was the only way for me to receive what he was saying change it into a different language and give it without getting in the way and getting into the intellect through movement, through gesture. And I think I did it out of intuition. And then it was like a beautiful dance and everyone described our workshops together like we were dancing in two different languages. It was really magical, really. And then he stopped and he said to me, who are you? <laughs> You've done that no, I'm just using gesture. And then after that workshop, I remember we met in London and he asked me to, to go with him and we gave workshops everywhere around Spain, in Russia, in the UK, everywhere. We were traveling everywhere for years. It's that just was that... training because I had normal training in a normal school, but it didn't really give me much. It was being with Graham, working with Graham, being on the, in the ground, you know, helping people. That's where I really learned, I think, and I'm still learning. Yeah, from the Vivian Lee story to the Graham story, things just happen with you, for you, to you. Don't it's great. You just gotta let them happen. They they, they want to happen. It's us that we stop them and resist them because we have a way of how they should happen. So we're not letting it happen the way they have to happen. And and normally that's better than what we think. So it's more about being open and receive. And when something happens, go with it. I had a very great also like a mentor his name is Arnold Taraborelli he's from Philadelphia but he was based in Spain all the main actors in Spain have trained with him and he's a movement um, teacher and a dance teacher and he always says your you know like your your um, matches box you know to to like things it always has to be dry because if the right person comes and asks for fire, you gotta be ready. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that was really interesting, and it's that's you gotta be ready. You gotta be awake to see things. Don't force them, but be uh, awake. And when something interesting comes, go with it and don't question it. Let it take you. It's just incredible those things you're saying because it, it, you do have to be brave to do it. And and what I really like about your. Um, I don't want to say these cliche things, teachings, or uh, you know uh, what you do, what you do is that it's um, it, it's very open and uh, and it's dropped a lot of barriers. But you mentioned earlier about the intellect. You said you bypass the intellect, uh, and and for me uh, as an as an actor, um, removing the intellect uh, it was very quick for me. No, uh, removing the intellect has been quite uh, wow. It, it's like an emancipation. It's completely freeing, you know. 
Yeah, I think what's, we're all there because we all are very intellectual and mind-based because of our culture, the way we've been educated and the schools we went to, especially in the West. But um, one of the most interesting things that I've discovered doing this work with actors from all over the world is, and with myself in my acting jobs, is that the, you cannot fight the intellect because you cannot not think about something, but you can think about something else or you can place your focus somewhere else. So we, the problem is we try to fight it. Oh, I'm in the mind. Am I in the mind? I don't know. You know, oh, shit, you know, this is yeah. not that. And then we react to those thoughts and it's really invite them for tea, let them come, don't resist them. Uh, just f focus, focus somewhere else. But if you try to fight it, it's a, uh, it's gonna get stronger and, and stronger because you're giving it attention and it's feeding on that attention. Um, and also, we need the intellect and the mind. You know, at first, I I realized that the people that were working with me, they were starting a war against the intellect. <laughs> and they had just to be, no, 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 need it. It's actually good. You need your mind. And you, you're but you're a whole instrument, and we need to read the user, um, you know, we need to read the instructions so we know how to use it because otherwise it's going to use us. And that's what happens with the mind most of the time and with our instruments and actors. So you do need the intellect and the mind because when you're on stage or on set, it's full of cables and lights and you need to hit a mark and you need to do things. But you need to be like in two places. We've spoken about this, like the double awareness. You've got to be in two places at the same time, or even in three or four. That's what an actor has to do. But I always like to think about the puppet master and the puppet. So you've got to be the puppet master, the one managing all the chords, and the puppet, and the puppet, the character with all the feeling. But at the same time, you're in charge. So you need both things. You know, you can't just go like feeling everything in such a strong way because then. The, the, the show made N in a very dramatic way. <laughs> it, it, it's great the way that the, the work is at high level, but it strips back, um, in my experience, it strips back a lot of the cliches and a lot of the snobbery and a lot of those, um, oh, don't you know that, or, or, or whatever. And it, it's very, very um, earthy and raw, I, I find it. You, know, you, you don't need to be intellectual. You don't need to impose on it. It's when you, uh, as you say, uh, work with the principles, it is easy. Um, you, you know, it, it just becomes, uh, it, you know, easy. Um, and light. Yeah, yeah. And, and and to be fair, a lot more fun, regardless of, of what you're playing. Uh, anyway, I'm going to embarrass you uh, a little bit, but I don't aim to. Because um, you were in uh, on Cavania and you, you played that, and uh, in one of the sessions, um, Inigo, uh, I asked him. I said, "You do it." You know, he, he, he did me. I said, "You do it," and he went, "Okay." And he did this thing for me, and you said, "You did it," and it was fantastic. And you went, "Wow, I, I need a second. I haven't been with him for a little while," and that blew my mind. Explain, you know, what you meant by that. Well, if you can, if you can remember, to me it was you know. Yeah, uh, um, I, I don't re no, I do, I do, I think I do. No, but it makes sense because <laughs> the, it, um, you know, I, I said earlier, any creative process is about relationships, yeah. And in this case, we're relating with the world of imagination, which we know it's an objective and real world, even though we cannot see it and touch it. But it's the I like to call it the world of potential. And that's where the characters live. You're bringing them here. You're giving them a body. You're doing the principle of incarnation, yeah? In the beginning was the verb, and then the verb turned into flesh and walk among us. That's what we do as actors. You don't have yeah. to create the character. You don't have to invent anything. It's been already born, and it lives in the world of imagination. So you've got to start a relationship with him and get to know him. And sometimes it's not until the last week or last shows that you really establish that relationship and that's a very happy moment because i always say now an ego can go for a holiday and let him do it you know because yeah. i've been taking all of this time now i really sense he's here and it is a relationship and one thing i think it's a beautiful job and we're very lucky because one thing that i 
believe happens for actors, the character that comes to you in a certain moment in your life, it doesn't come for no reason. You gotta learn something from that character. And I believe that it's a two way strip. The character is learning something from you as well. So I feel we're giving them- so, Hang on, hang on, hang on, well, just say that again, because that is like, great. Say the character is- God already. <laughs> Something from the character, something you need to learn in that moment of your life. And the character is learning something from you as well. Because you're giving that character a body and a voice. Yeah? You, you're, being, you're allowing this character to be seen in this manifested world where we live. Because at the moment he's in the world of the mind nation. So you're making a sacrifice, getting rid of yourself, giving your body. You're not being possessed. You're in charge. <laughs> you know? You're in control. <laughs> you're letting this character come in and speak through you, through you, through your physical filter, yeah? And, um, and, and there is a relationship. And I think in a way, they redeem us and we redeem them in a way. Apart, you know, there is something, it's, it's, a, it's love. It's based on love, like not romantic love, like real love. Yeah. And that's what we do to the we make love to the audience and we fall in love with characters and for me when i this character i felt it very strongly and i i, I did a sort of like a, a farewell ritual to get you know because the show stopped but i felt i saw pictures that i would take with my friends and i was seeing the character <laughs> <laughs> you're still the doctor <laughs> you know? so i just I put a chair in front of me and, and I thank, and I, this is like the Vivian Lee story. <laughs> you know, I imagine him in front of me and I thank him and I hope to see you again. Now we have to continue, you know. See, these things in essence, they are exercises for the imagination anyway, you yeah. know, so that constant um, connection and, I remember speaking and we were talking about, I, I said, now my approach is I act all of the time. You know, I, I'm constantly trying to receive and uh, and do those things. And it makes, when I get a script and I, or I'm working on a script, um, it just, it's a joy. Um, you, you know, I, I'm not intellectually, uh, it, there's no angst in it. It's a joy. You're not alone. There is another element that it's yeah. real. Uh, um but Luis, uh, who is watching us, he was playing Uncle Vanya in the production where I, you know, that we were talking about. He said it was an absolute pleasure to see Inigo in, in Uncle Vanya. And it was great working with you, Luis. It was so great. And we were in such a special theatre in Lisbon. And uh, great memories. Big, yeah. big act from here for you, Luis. Yeah, he was, he's a great, great actor, great guy. And uh, the whole company, they were all amazing. Was, yeah. Yeah, it's good. I, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Michael Chekhov technique because I, I think these days a lot of things get pigeonholed into saying, oh, oh, you know, this is the method, this is Lee Strasberg, this is Stanislavski, this is Michael Chekhov. Um, your approach is completely uh, uh, fr from that. You've taken the work and taken it on, um, you, you know, because obviously when people die, th their work doesn't stop, but what they, that's, as far as they yeah. got stopped. I think that's the way, it's the only way it can be. Uh, Chekhov planted some seeds and started, started something. But that something is alive and it needs to continue and live through us, through all of us, yeah? And we've got to add something to it and contribute to it. I don't get why we should just get what something did 100 years ago and put it in a urn and take it to a museum and then try to act with that. <laughs> what are you going to do with that? <laughs> act about something that it's alive, is a vibration that it's happening in the moment. So yes, when we create systems, when we do schools, when we do things, we kill, we kill, we kill it. Yeah. It's, we kill it with the mind. Yeah, I, I've really found working with you that that, that that freedom and and the other thing that I really respect of you is that you you genuinely challenge me. You, you know, there's been times when you said, "Mark, stop doing your shtick, stop being Mark," and 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 stuff. And I've gone, "Oh yeah," because nobody's ever said, you know, "Oh, he's just doing him," or, or he's just doing those things. Uh, and that was like 
great. So I think in any uh, person that you work with or have a relationship with, um, I think those challenges are important. And you, you've done that for me. And now I challenge myself even more than I, I did. So it's a, it's a great gift you passed on there. It's, it's, again, it's about receiving. You see, it's about seeing what's happening in front of you. And then you, because you're outside, you see in a very clear way what the person is doing and what the resistance of that person is in that moment, you know? Like, and it's different with the different people that, that I've worked with, but it's so beautiful to watch and very helpful because then when I'm rehearsing or, or filming something, I find myself doing the same things that you do, for example, but for me to see you doing it and being able to tell you, Mark, don't do that, you know, then it's helping me because then I've got that voice telling me when I'm doing it. We yeah. all, but it's not really a challenge. It's, a, um, it's about, it's perception really. It's being open to see what's happening and because you, you don't really think have to think about oh what i'm going to say to him i'm just being able to see and i see clearly what's happening and i'm a mirror the mm. whole thing is happening in you within you i'm not doing anything i'm reflecting back that's all that i'm doing so you have a clear image so the whole process you're going through is your process you're doing it you determine if i do a session with you and i do a session with someone else it's going to be completely different because it's about yeah. the person i'm just reflecting back so i can be like a guide in a way but not not, not teaching anything you see yeah but i I've, i've found that you know the sessions are, are never staged or you know forced or anything sometimes they, they may take sorry say that again i never prepare them all the work but and but that, because I've done workshops for 20 people and you know like at, at the beginning I would take like like a little paper but I never looked at it but only did it just in case nothing happens but it's about receiving reading the group reading the people who are they Where, and all the information is there in their mm -hmm. body how they move how they speak when they do the exercise how they do the gesture when we do the exercise of giving, are they fully giving or they're kind of like doing this with the fingers so people who don't really fully fully give for a reason. And if you really are open, you, you begin to receive all sorts of information about that people and then you know where to take them, you know what they need. And I think real training. Why, why should I prepare something at home where I'm not in, in touch with anyone, I don't know them, and mm. then try to make fit them into what I've prepared because it's what I've prepared. And now I feel safe, you know. No, it's about that connection in the moment, being able to see who is this person? Okay, what's in the way, you know? And, yeah. and that comes. You just got to ask the question and let it come. It, it shows, it reveals in our bodies the way we talk. My, my uh, characters, uh, uh, and, uh, I don't want to say performance because it's, it's one of the things, are, are very much deeper than they've ever been and much more rich, um, you know, since doing the work. I'm not saying that, you know, it's amazing and everything like that, but for my own fulfillment, I, I feel them to be, um, you know, stronger and uh, and just more rich uh, for, for the year. Uh, you, you mentioned something in our last session, actually, and you spoke about uh, our job as an actor, Uh, which again really resonated with me and you went our job is i hope you don't mind me sharing this is to uh, elevate an audience uh, and and again and you said even if you know you're playing the darkest character you know yeah that's 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 art i think it's about connecting the poetic with the profane the divine with the mundane the 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 even if you're telling if you're doing a, a very bloody or sad or dark play you have to do it artistically because mm. it has to be cathartic it has to be transformative you see so you can tell something very tell a story that it's very dark but it has to elevate the audience and we do have a responsibility in that because the audience when they go to see a play or a movie we're very open You know, we, we kind of like signed like a silent contract, especially in theatre, which I find very, very exciting and, 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 and 
and wonderful, really, that, okay, I'm going to believe everything you say. I'm going to, that's what the audience, you know, they leave their busy jobs in the city, you know, like working for big companies, like real life, and then they sit in a dark, beautiful old building, waiting for people to tell a story, and they, they, we will believe what you're saying. Mm. So they are opening up. So we have a responsibility with what we're putting in, you see? Because it's very powerful. And that, that, I think that's why we have to do it artistically, because art is very safe, because it's always elevated. Mm. Yeah? Like a divine quality in a way, it's elevated. If you read um, the essay by Lorca, Duende, he talks about how in the south of Spain, when it was invaded by the Muslims, these dancers who were like the beginning of flamenco, I, I suppose, when they really got in, into the zone, they really were doing something amazing. Everyone would go, Allah, Allah, God, God. And that's where Ole comes from. So they understood something yeah, yeah. extraordinary was happening. And I think that's art, really. It's, um, it, it's just incredible to, uh, to do that. Now, I, I just wanted to put out there because your uh, approach, we joke about this, you know, we say that we're Europeans and, and, uh, and, and, uh, and English. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't. But uh, it, it is um, a, a very a different uh, approach. And, and I would say, some people say, oh, that's not for me. It's to this, to that, to uh, to feely and, 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 and stuff. Uh, but I have to say, you are like a chameleon. Um, so I, I also do another session with other people from around the world um, of sessions. And I see you work in different ways with different people. So you really do, in my experience, receive a person um, and work with them in in their way it's not like oh you're going to inigo you're going to work his way um you really and i get that <laughs> that's the thing i couldn't do it in a different <clears throat> way i wouldn't know what to do yeah it, by as it comes in the moment because i open up to that person and all the information comes and, and sorry just to make something clear because you were saying a very good point when you were saying that this is too feely and and some people understand Chekhov, misunderstand Chekhov as mm. some very fairy new age of fire, energy, blah, blah. And it's a very rigorous, it's a very rigorous and specific and tangible approach. And you know that, you have experienced that. It's very rigorous and you really feel you've got something tangible. Because my problem as an actor was, I've been in many different schools in different countries and no one could really give me something tangible something like a tangible technique something that it was there you see it was like a bit of like hit and miss have a bit of this bit of that oh that helps sometimes you know but for the first time when i met graham i went wow this is it it's yeah. it's tangible it's solid but at the same time it's alive and in constant change and graham always says that all of his work and i agree with him that's why there is no like an approach, like the Inigo approach, because it is born out of the sessions with the people on the workshops. Mm. Like, yeah. It's it, um, when um, you say that about an approach, it, what I love is the fact of the principles. And I wanted a philosophy, you know, not something to hang on to, but something to stand on, if that makes sense. Something, as you said, tangible that I could use. Uh, and I found, and that would be ever evolving, that wouldn't be, you know, into a box or, or, or something like that. Yeah. And I just thought about something when you when you're speaking there, I apologize for that. But you, you, it's like you explored a second, you know, because the work is, it's like you're, you've got a second there and suddenly you've stopped time and we're looking inside a second uh, and there's so much and you're going oh my god it's like i didn't realize that where i think um particularly i'm only speaking personally here but i'm sure people will resonate particularly um newer actors they're coming in, they just want to get there they just want to get there i want to do it want to be and it's in that stillness that, that you've broken that second and you, you we and we really get into it it's uh, it's just great I, I can't recommend it highly enough but you know that's just me <laughs> thank you no it's 
fast food <clears throat> culture. We want everything now. Wow, yeah. And we do something and we don't understand that the moment you stop doing, you're actually creating a space for something to happen. Yeah. And that's, that's I think, when that something happens, that's the whole reason why we want to be actors because that's the most extraordinary experience you you will have in your life when you see that thing happening to you it is done to you you don't do it it is done to you yeah you see and in order to let it be done to you you got to stop doing it for a few seconds so it can operate on you <laughs> yeah but it, yeah, i mean it, it's absolutely right the fast food thing is we constantly are on you know, we're on the phone, we're on this, we're switched on, we're, uh, and stuff. And then just looking at this work in a different way and looking at our work in different ways. Uh, it's just, you know, great. Uh, it's not even an application, as you said, it's just, uh, it happens to you. I, uh, I absolutely love it. Um, I, I want to change tack a, a, a little bit um, and speak about some decisions that you've made in your career Um you know, uh, around that. Uh, and uh, again, I, because we haven't spoken before, this is just after coffee and everything. So just stop me uh, because you work, but you're very um, selective, would you say? Uh, and, and, and the reason I'm asking you this is for people that are watching about, you know, I, I just work, I'll take anything. Um, and I think it's just the level that I'm at and the stage that I'm at. Um, to do that. But tell me about, you know, your approach and the, why you made that decision. Um, well, I've done a lot of things like I've, in this moment of doing everything because I needed the experience. Yeah, because you learn in, in, in experience, you learn on stage or in front of the camera. So you need, you need that. And at the beginning of your career, you, you're not going to be in the film you would like to be. You're in the film that you are. Yeah, and then you need to make the best out of it and really, it's like flying hours, you know, like that's, that, that experience is what really makes an actor, yeah. Uh, so I've, I've done that, I've done a lot of theatre, but then, yeah, it's true, there was a moment, but it's not that I've been selected, in a way, life has taken me in that way because mm. it was not just acting, I also was involved in production, uh, film production and then this thing with the studio in London. So I had other things that were connected with the world of acting, but they were not necessarily acting. So I've always been busy and, and, and expanding other areas. So um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say is uh, there was a point where I didn't have that urge to just do, 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 do. And now when I do, yeah, it's because it's something that I really want to do and I really like doing because I'm very lucky because of my job at the studio, I get to act every day you know, and to be creative every day. So now when a project, I want to invest my energies and time in projects that I believe in and I do it from the acting point of view or from the also production writing point of view. So I rather do that than spend my whole life doing auditions and running from casting to casting. Uh, it was a decision, yeah, of managing my energies really and really focusing on projects that I really believe in, that they have messages that I think they're important. And that for a project to come out, it's maybe three years of work. So that doesn't give me much time to do a lot of the other things. So it was a priority. It was, yeah, priority. When you made that, uh, whether it conscious or unconscious decision, did you feel a, a, a pull, uh, you, you know, because uh, again, that's like stepping into the void, I suppose, of going, oh, I could work, 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 and then suddenly you're, you're not, or, or you're, you're not doing as much. Was there a, a conflict there? <clears throat> uh, no, I've always, the thing is, I've always been very busy. I, I, I've never been like, oh, I'm not doing anything. I always had something, you know? Yeah. So I've been very lucky in that way. Um, it wasn't necessarily acting all the time, but I always had, uh, like, producing a, um, a play or 
or directing the play or writing something or trying to get a project to go into Netflix or trying to, you know, all of the, or being a casting director. I've done all of, I've done everything. Yeah. I've been assistant for actors, you know, like I always said yes to everything. I went to, to Colombia with, with Jim Caviezel. Uh, you remember him from The Passion of the Christ. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, we did a film together. That's, this is what, how it happens. We were talking about this earlier. We did a film together in Spain. I work in production for that film, but also then as an actor, okay? And I work with wonderful actors like Maria de Medeiros, a legend uh, from Pulp Fiction, or, you know, and then I, I work with um, Jim Caviezel, uh, and, and then we became quite close. And then he was doing a film in Colombia with Mira Sorvino and great cast. And um, he had some scenes in, in Spanish. So he asked me to go there, but I, I wasn't working at the studio in London yet or anything. So I went there with him and uh, I was kind of like his dialect coach. I would help him to run lines, but I would also buy underwear for him. <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> 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 running after his coffee while running lines with him, telling him how to pronounce something so I've always said yes to everything so I've always been very busy and very excited maybe not so focused just in acting because I don't see myself just as an actor because this is holistic this is all connected mm -hmm. me has always been very important to understand all the faces of it all the parts of it you know not just one so being just an actor for me I wouldn't be sad. I want more. Maybe I'm, I'm a bit greedy. So, you know, that's what makes me be selective in my acting choices as job choices, because I'm very busy with other things that I'm doing. Yeah, I, I don't, I definitely don't think it's a, a, a greed at all. I think when you've, uh, it, it's, it's reciprocal. And you said it's a relationship. If you are giving value, you're receiving it. And, uh, and those are some of the things that I've really got, from the uh, from the work. So, in, in terms of um, heroes and influences uh, within the industry or even outside of the in industry, who who are those people for you? It Hang on, before you start, we just got some great things. Um, uh, I love Inigo. Somebody saying there, brilliant teacher as well. I missed the classes in Marbella. Uh, Marbella, sorry, uh, with you. Oh, come on, you you you're loved around the world. Well, I I. <laughs> I am, and I feel very privileged because this work, you, you do love the people you work with because it's a very real thing, you see, and you see the person for what they are in their potential. It's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. And something happens between you and the people you work with. There is a bound there forever. That's for sure. Oh man, without un unquestionable doubt, you know the uh, the 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 ties that uh, that I I don't know whether you feel, but I'm thinking, oh my God, it, this is just great, and I know that there's great um, value in it for me. Uh, but again, it's like I want to say, is there anything I can do for you? You know, I, so it's those sort of uh, things because I, I think by nature we as people are not just takers we're, we're uh, you know we like to share and we like to 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 help each other sorry I stopped you there just because of those great comments um so tell me about your influences and who uh you know who ah oh, well you know I I love the the good classics like Laurence Olivier and all of that Judy Dench uh Max. Vivian Lee Vivian Lee. Oh, I was very lucky to see Helen Mirren in theatre during the audience in London. And, oh my God, I'll tell you very quickly what happened. Because I was in the front row. I had a, like a day seat. I, I think I was queuing from five. I, I was at five in the morning queuing to get a day seat. And then I was in the front row and I had Helen Mirren in front of me performing. And that was like, wow. And then she was looking at me all the time. And I was with a friend saying, She's looking at me. And then my friend would say, no, she's looking at me. And then, <laughs> but then, then I, I started, she was looking at me and I could feel it and I feel the pressure and I feel the responsibility. I thought I have to give her something and sustain this performance. I felt very there <laughs> for three hours. I was exhausted at the end of the show. And then we went to backstage, to the stage door 
to see her coming out. And there was a, a guy who announced that Miss Mirren will not sign anything or take pictures with anyone. But if you wanted your program to be signed, give it to him, he'll get it signed and then give it back to you. But she's coming out straight to the car and gone. She's tired. I was like, okay, let's just see her. I like to see actors when they're on stage and then when they're off stage. That contrast is so rom romantic and beautiful to see the real person versus the, the character, you see? So I saw her coming out of the building she looked at me and she came to me. She touched me and she Aww. said, you were in the front row. You're so sweet. Thank you so much. And then she went to the car and left. And then I, said, I turned to my friend and said, you see, she was looking at me. <laughs> oh man, that is amazing. <laughs> it, well, it, it's interesting you speak about Helen Mirren because um, I, I've got the Masterclass series, which is like a subscription thing. Yeah. And, and she's on there. And in some of the things, she she doesn't mention Chekhov, but she, yeah, touches, you know, she speaks in a way that the work speaks. Yeah. you know, many. I don't know if she's aware of it, but many, many talented actors, like the very truly talented actors, they're using Chekhov without knowing it's Chekhov because it's not really Chekhov. It's it's Chekhov just saw it and said, "Hey, let's do this," but it's what real talented people do being in a world that they're doing it, you see? But yeah. what, it's very helpful because it gives us uh, techniques so we don't have, we can rely on that. There's a story of Laurence Olivier, I think he was playing Othello and then he, at, at the end of the show, he was in his dressing room. It was a great night, he did a great job, but he didn't want to come out. He was having a crisis inside. And they were like knocking on the door, Larry, what's the problem? Come on, you were great. And then he came out, that's the problem. I don't know how to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But he didn't do it, you know, but what Chekhov is giving us is that ability to know that it's always there and it's available for us, you see? Yeah, it's uh, great. Um, we've got a previous guest on there, Betsy Steve. Betsy Steve is, um, uh, an anxiety uh, specialist. He was our very first guest when, when we, we started oh, wow. to do these. And he's just said there, what a guy, exceptional. Uh, and coming from Steve, that is like, whoa, you know. Uh, Thank you. It, it's great. In fact, you, you probably inspired these uh, actors' talks more than anyone um, because I was thinking there's some real rich stuff to give out there. Listen, if people want to work with you, um, can they, how do they get in touch with you? What, you know, this is the advert and, and I'm, I'm open up front and saying, do you know what? Very uh, big, it doesn't take anyone, <laughs> I'm kidding. Well, here's the thing. I don't really want to tell anybody because selfishly, I, I want to keep, you, you know, and I'm thinking, he's not my possession, <laughs> you know, so share any go with the world. It's, uh, that's what I say. The better the world gets, the better you get. Yeah. We, knowledge needs to be shared. Like. You know, like, yeah, don't feel threatened. <laughs> well, it's one of the things that, that you, you know, um, I, I'm not a big one. I hate comparison. Um, you know, I think that that really just strip us as people when we compare against each other things um, uh, and, and stuff. Uh, and it's, it's one of those things that working with you has really polished those things and gone, yeah, do you know what? It's great. And now I, it's a joy to work with people, you know, because I'm, yeah. I'm after the creativity. When you're surrounded by very good creative people, the only thing that could happen is that you get more creative and better. You see, so it's it's a win-win situation. Yeah, yeah. Because so, we, I, 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 so they can they can go to our website, uh, the um, michaelcheckoffstudio.org.uk, uh, and there they've got all the information. All the programs we're doing now are online. We're also doing a QA and a um, online program, which is basically you send us to an email address that you will find in the website under the Q&A section. You send us your questions about acting, could be technical or not so technical. And then we answer with a um, video that it's published in our YouTube channel, which is quite successful. And we're very happy because we're getting a lot of questions and from everywhere. Today I was filming a video 
a guy from India, and I was really struggling to pronounce his name. <laughs> it was really difficult, but it's great to get questions from all over the world. You know, See, feel the pain. When I first met you, I was going, in, 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 oh, how do you say that? <laughs> it's so difficult for everyone, even well, not in Spain, but when you go to Latin America, they, there's no Inigo. I, it's a Basque name, so it's right. weird. But you've got Inigo Jones in the, in the UK. He was a British. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, um, yeah, it, I think it's more my ignorance that I can't pronounce it than anything else. Do you know that in Covent Garden, the, the, the actress church, in Covent Garden, some Paul's yes, yeah, yeah, is in a little street called Inigo's Place. <laughs> Did you know that? I didn't know that. And it's uh, after Inigo Jones, who was uh, an architect from the Baroque time, I think. And he did a lot of like uh, set designs for opera and, and theatre. He was he's a great architect. He actually, I think, he did that little church. So. See the the seeds of the name are, are, are coming through. Um, just a quick chat about your, uh, your your videos. The videos are absolutely uh, brilliant and chock full, much like uh, our chat here, chock full of hidden depths. Uh, and I think that's the big thing about speaking with you is there's always more to what you say than than just the words. You know, there's there's layers and layers and depths and depths and depths and depths. So I would strongly recommend. A, watch this video back, um, but B, um, go and have a look at the Michael Chekhov stuff and uh, and see that because your answers are just amazing. What, what, some of the questions you've had are about stage fright and things. Yeah, most of them are about straight, stage fright or what's the biggest resistance you an actor find. You know, that, that talks a lot about what I go through, you know. <laughs> it's really interesting. Then I got this guy from India was asking me uh, if he can he doesn't have money to 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 get an acting training and he was asking if he could train himself by reading books you know wow uh, i said to him uh, but the video has not been published yet but this is i will give you this. no what i said to him an was, exclusive is it for mark no what i said to him was reading books is great but you need the experience you know, so find a way of being, of acting, find an amateur group, anything, and don't give up because the money or the way to do it always, always comes. It doesn't come when you stop believing in it. When you give mm. up, then it doesn't come, but it always comes. I, no one founded my training, nobody. My parents, they didn't want me to do that. They're, okay, you do it, but you, you know, if you want to do it, you do it. And I found Graham in the most, I mean, before that I had a training, but you know, I, I, I applied for a scholarship to Lambda, Lambda and Rada, and I got to the final rounds in both, and then I didn't get it. And then they gave me a scholarship to go to Los Angeles to, to school where Michael Chekhov had been the director when he lived there. And the, the scholarship they gave me wasn't enough for me to cover all of the cuts so i couldn't go so i was desperate oh, wow. i wrote a letter to judy bench and i gave it to her asking for help <laughs> you know what like three months later in an interview she said that the situation in the uk was really worried worrying because acting was is only for rich people now like and, and that there's a lot of talent being not uh, polished you know and being lost but then i found graham i didn't give up and i i didn't find the money but i found a guy who would pay me and i would learn working next to him yeah yeah real training i had you see uh, you see th this is uh, um to me is like uh the apprenticeship you know i'm not talking about a government apprenticeship i'm talking about an old master you, you know when you you would go and work with an old master and you do it for nothing but you glean uh, the the knowledge and the the ways and everything uh, and for me personally i don't think that that has ever been bettered and what you're describing there is the fact that yeah you know what if you put yourself out there if you go and meet the people and 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 do that i mean there's some things that uh, that i've done and people are going why would you do that you, you're working for nothing you're doing it. i went i'm getting everything yeah i'm getting everything uh you know and people, oh no I, I i can't afford it i can't do this i'm going no, 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 no. It's not about the, the cash or the money. It's, um, it, well, it's just... One who, who is stopping yourself. It's you, really. And, and it's true. I mean, the thing is, 
things happen in, in maybe in a way that it's different from what we imagine or we want to happen. But that's why I said earlier, stay open because it's in front of you. You're just not seeing it because you're too fixed on the way it should happen on the form, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and you're fixated on that. But if you really are open and just, why not? I'll give it a chance. And then that takes you to the next thing and to the next thing and to the next thing. But it's this fast food culture as well. I want the results now. And yeah. we can the journey for the process. And we talk about this in the sessions as well. You, we want the results because we want to feel safe. I've got it. I've got the character. I did it. Can I go home now? I'm safe. Yeah. You, you know, you want the experience, you yeah. know? You, you come here for the journey, for the experience of it. That's it. I, I mean, I can imagine that some people, uh, when they work with you first, it, it's they're a bit blown away to go, what? Because some of these concepts, uh, if you've been living that fast food culture, I can imagine a quite, um, I, I don't know, I'm only speaking for myself here, but um, I, I can imagine a quite uh, alien in, in, but they're very simple. And once you uh, get them uh, and open them, it, it's just, uh, it's just great. Most of the people that I get, they come because they're desperate and they, they're thinking there must be another way. So most of the times they're very happy to hear that. And they're yeah. like, okay, now how do I do it? Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's pretty... I don't know. Join the club. It's a process. We're all there. <laughs> I, I, I love it. So I, I would strongly recommend. I mean, I, I we have weekly sessions together, and uh, you know, sometimes I, we just sit and chat <laughs> like this. <laughs> no, no, no. If you take a session, you do you work and you, you do those things. But um, I think it depends. Uh, like I said before, Inigo works with uh, people in their own way, uh, and 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 that's the, uh, one of his. Uh, gifts and i know you're here i'm not speaking because <laughs> you're not here but uh and i i glean a lot of that so i will be watching this back because it's quite hard to listen and 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 watch you uh, as well uh, so i'll be watching back and and, and and taking my little notes and everything don't take it <laughs> don't uh <laughs> in, no. shouts at me because he will be doing something and i'll be Stop taking notes. <laughs> well, you need to remember in this moment, you will remember it. Because then when you go back to the notes out of context, they don't mean anything. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, yeah. and then they approach them from a mental point of view. I, think. I, I wish my accountant would have the same approach. That would be great, right? <laughs> <laughs> Inigo, I can't tell you uh, how thankful I am for you coming on. And uh, I, I know just from the feedback already that people will have got a massive amount. I'm, I'm going to put you on uh, uh, pressure. If there was one thing, and I know there isn't one thing, what would be your um, legacy to uh, the acting world? If you, if you ha had a legacy at the end of your career, um, what will you look back and, and be super proud of? I don't know. Let's find out. Oh, see, that is you. That is a top answer. I do that now. No, I'm starting. <laughs> it's the process. I don't know. I, I'm only 16. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it. Um, thanks very much. Uh, so, listen, your time is very, very, uh, always well spent with you. Um, and, and thanks very much. Uh, and I look forward to seeing you Thursday, I think. Thursday, yes. Thursday. <laughs> Yeah, we we could still be talking uh, until Thursday. Oh, no, you love talking, but I always stop you. Say now, let's do something. Because yeah, let's do some work. Each you need the experience of it, right? <laughs> See, this is what I mean. He challenges me. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Inigo, um, I wish you all the very best and uh, much man hugs uh, for whatever you do in the future. Because uh, I know you're going to be. Super, super special, and keep on spreading the uh, the special Inigo acting magic. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mark, and congratulations for this great um, space that you have created. And thank you for inviting me. Brilliant. See you soon, buddy. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Inigo Caliano. Bye bye. <laughs> bye thank bye. You. Thanks, buddy. And thank you so much. Bye. Oh, well. So I told you, as a fanboy, uh, he's just uh, amazing. 
um, I would strongly recommend uh, go and search him out. He's on Instagram. I think his account is private on Instagram, uh, but it's Inigo Chialiano. Um, I'll put a link in in this afterwards. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please share the video as well, um, because you know he's got some valuable valuable gifts to help um, actors and and people in the acting world with. Uh, I, I've gleaned a tremendous amount and made uh, great strides um, with my acting comfort, as it were. You, you know, I, I like being uncomfortable to get comfortable. So it's great. So check out his. Um, YouTube channel. It's Michael Chekhov Studio London. Um, Graham has also got some great videos on YouTube. Um, you, you'll, you'll see them there. And if you want to work with him, you go get in touch with him. Um, it'll be really, really valuable uh, for you. As I say, I, I do it weekly and the benefits have been massive. Um, wow. Uh, 70 minutes speaking with Inigo. I can't believe it. Uh, do you know what? It's like having um, a free uh, seminar um, when we speak to these people. So I really, truly hope you're enjoying these. Um, and if you could, share them, put them out with people. And what happens then is we attract uh, even more people, um, a different fields uh, and everything. Great guest on last night, great guest on tonight. Um, tomorrow we've got another brilliant actor on um, and the week is great. And I've got some excellent, even uh, you know, um, excellent people lined up for the future as well. Because they're starting to come to me um, now uh, and then we can share it with you guys. So thanks very much for being part of this and, uh, and making it great. Um, have a good one, people. I uh, hope you really enjoyed that, Mr. Inigo Galliano. I just like saying it. Um, have a great night. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.